This is a Raspberry Pi handheld console. It uses RetroPie and it can emulate a bunch of consoles such as PS1, PSP, NES, Sega and much more. It also features a touchscreen with a functioning on-screen keyboard and also dual Hall Effect sensor joysticks to eliminate the possibility of joystick drift. It is completely designed and built by me, so if you want to see how I built it, then stick around. I will also put a link in the description for all the STL files and the list of the parts, just in case anyone wants to build something like this. Also, if you want to see videos about the components inside this, I'll have a link in the video description with a playlist and you can just watch that. And without further ado, let's get to the build. This is what I've got so far. I've printed this mainly to uh, get the dimensions and stuff because this, this was my mounting idea for it. But what I think I'm going to do is print a shell um, and then take advantage of these mounting holes here. I'll probably have to chop these GPIO pins, but I have this fan adapter, so I don't know if I want to do that. I've also got a fan here, but I don't know if I can send anything to the display to control the fan, whereas for this I can. We'll see, but till then, I'm going to take care of these controls because the word ergonomics doesn't even apply to what's going on here. I've just got square <laughs> edges. Uh, obviously the triggers are going to be hard to reach and I would like to chop this side off. So I started by applying the heatsink and trimming those GPIO pins down to make room for the battery. Then I trimmed the PCBs to size. Then I start getting set up to solder the buttons on the PCBs and the ground wires which will cause me problems later on. After the ground wires were soldered, I started soldering the signal wires. The video doesn't do justice to how long it took to cut, strip and solder so many tiny wires. After the soldering was done, I installed the PCBs in the prototype case I printed. Some of the screw holes I had to do manually. After everything was installed, I soldered the signal wires to the pins on the WaveShare Zero. Alright, everything is soldered up. Looks like a spaghetti monster, but yeah. And now I need to connect a USB and see if it works. Did I kill it? No way. Yes. Okay. Oh! It is detected. Okay, so nothing from, well, actually, a lot of them are not detected. Triggers are not, this is not, so far, okay. I did some research at work today and uh, I realized that I remembered the diagram wrong for the buttons. This, well, any sort of like push buttons, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got these little four legs and they are connected this way not this way so not too like that but they're connected like that well i thought it was the other way around so um i'm just gonna have to resolder a few things and in theory it should work but we'll see and resolder is why i did it took a lot of time so if i learned anything from this mistake is not to rely on my memory check drawings always all right it detected it right away, as you can see for yourself. But let me try some buttons out. Okay, so that's still being detected weird. Well, it's 
supposed to do some got something to do with the pins I need to configure them as well but yeah so I got to work the firmware has the pins configured in a certain way but I sold the wires differently so I had to reconfigure the pins I've done everything properly now now everything works if I do a little test you'll see the buttons all work I just need to configure the joysticks this button works, triggers work an almost complete controller from scratch, that's pretty cool I've got my shell printed so now it's time to clean it up and do a little plastic weld because as you can see there's two pieces and it should only be one. I started by cleaning the support material of the 3D prints. Then I taped the back cover pieces so that I can fuse them together using a soldering iron. By the way, if anyone wants to glue PLA parts, this is by far the best method. Then I went to work on my back cover. Don't pay too much attention to my plastic welding station. After I finished the back cover, I screwed in the front pieces so I can have them square when welding them. We've got one solid part. And then we've got another solid part. To secure the fan to the heating, I used a bit of double-sided tape. I also had to solder even longer wires for the battery so I can tape it to the back cover. I then desoldered the thick wires on the USB 3 pins and soldered thinner and shorter ones. This made the USB port not work anymore, so I just soldered it to the 2.0 pins instead and it worked just fine. I also soldered a USB-C mail header to the other USB 2.0 pins for my GP24EC controller. After that, I started putting everything in the case. I also tried to orientate the battery in the best position possible. I secured the stack of boards in the chassis using the standoffs that came with the screen and some M2 screws. Then I transferred all the controls electronics from the prototype to the chassis. and the console is complete. 